Right, so what I'm going to do now is build a statistical shape model using this training set of 10 ears, 10 models that I've loaded into Scalismo. You can see in the X, Y and Z plane, they're all different shaped ears. And these are my 10 meshes here. I can change the colour of some of them just to show how they overlap. Alright, so I've got 10 shapes, so I'm now going to run some code and create a statistical shape model and then I'm going to load that into the UI that's running now, it doesn't take long. Uh, while I'm just waiting for that, I have a target shape lo loaded in here which is hidden at the moment. And I'll come back to that in a second. Alright, so you can see here in this group in the UI that I've created called model group it's now calculated my shape model. So what I'm going to do is actually going to hide my triangle, my training. Excuse that. I'm going to hide all these training shapes. We don't need them anymore. And I'm going to just look at a single 3D viewpoint. Port viewport. It just takes a moment. Okay. nearly there. Okay, so this is my statistical shape model based on those 10 and I can see here I can then go and randomly scroll through the different modes of variation to look at the legal shapes that my model can create. And I can always go back to my average shape. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my target visible which I loaded in earlier, I actually had to decimate that. The original scanned image was 180,000 vertices, so I've downsampled that to 5,000 vertices, so it's a bit faster to work with. Now my problem is those are not aligned. So if I'm going to try and fit this shape model to this target shape, I need to align my target shape to my model. So I can do that by uh, loading some landmarks that I early set earlier. So on my target shape I'll load some landmarks. And on my statistical shape model I will load some landmarks as well. Just a few that I put in earlier just to give it a very rough rigid alignment. Not a lot of thought went into this. I just picked some points. I just picked three points there around the ear. This is my model. And you see I picked the similar three points. In hindsight, I probably would have picked some points around the outside. It doesn't make much difference because when I fit later, I just need it to be roughly, rigidly aligned. All right, so I can now run some code to align that. I'll just run that from my IDE okay that code's running now okay so what it's done now is created a model called aligned I'll make that green and so it's basically taking the original target and it moves it over there and I can save that aligned model in my folder because I'm going to use that later for my fitting. And I'll just overwrite this one that I saved earlier, alignscan.stl. And I've overwritten that. Okay, so I'm going to hide my target. I'm going to zoom in to my shape there. I'll hide those landmarks. And I'll just make my model a little bit see-through, just so you can get a sense of if we toggle through the various modes, size, some different changes to the ear there with the different modes of variation. 
So our goal will now be to work out the parameters that best fit our model to our target shape. Okay, so now I've moved to another UI which runs a different better set of code where I'm going to attempt to fit my model to the target shape using uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling. So I've already loaded in my model there. You can, let me just reset that. There is my shape and I can go through the randomly modes of variation. Okay, so now what I want to do is I actually have loaded in my target shape, which is there. I'll make that red. So you can see I lined that in the previous segment. And just as a little quick demonstration, I'll get my shape model and I'll make it 50% see-through. And again, we can the objective is to fit this shape model to that red target shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split into two viewports. And I am going to make this one visible in the right side and my shape model visible in the left side. And I'll make that full visibility. Right, so to do the fitting, I need to define some landmarks. Now, I already have some previous landmarks for my model. I will downsize those a bit because the scaling suits my larger bone shapes. So I've chosen these previously. They match the mean shape, which I've now set. I'm just going to hide those landmarks in the uh, right view. So what I do need landmarks in my target shape. I'll do it fairly crudely. Uh, so there's a lot of scope for, I'm no expert on ears, but choosing appropriate landmarks and, and more landmarks will, will only help with the fitting. So I actually have to match the same order, which I've gone Handy clockwise around here. So let's start off about here. Again, this is very, very rough. One at the top, one at the side here. Again, not clear landmarks. One down in the bottom corner, and one at this point here. And I will hide those in my left view. Not perfect, but close enough. This one here may be a little bit higher. I'll delete a few of those and then do that again. I've just got to get the order right, so maybe put it a bit higher. Again, it's not really critical and I can change it later. One down there and one there. Okay, I'm happy with that. Again, I'll make these. Right. Okay, so now I'm going to do my sampling just to show that in a good effect I'm going to back go back to a single 3D viewpoint. I'm going to make my model partly see-through. And uh, I can set the number of samples here. Uh, I'll change it to say 20,000 samples. I have a burn-in number here which is related to the Markov chain. I won't play with that, so I'm just going to simply hit run. And what you now see is it is sampling. To find sampling 20,000 times. And then it's going to use probabilities to predict the best shape from all those samples. It's going to accept or reject. 
Right, so let's hide some stuff there. So I'm going to hide my model now. What I've got there, the green is my best fit, and it's trying to fit the red. Looks okay. So what I can do is save that. Save some STLs. Uh, 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 my down here, like ground truth is my target, and the best fit is the model prediction. And I'll actually hit this compare button which will do some calculations for me. Just takes a moment. It also creates a scalar mesh for me. You can see here down the comments, it's calculated the average distance between the two shapes. It's five 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 and a half millimeters. And the Haasdorf's difference distance is 15 mils, but there's a really good reason for those bad numbers is because my target doesn't have all this from my statistical shape model. So it's not that clear numbers but what I can look at is if I hide everything except my scalar mesh field I've now got this is my predicted model and if I look at the scalar range it's 240 but the reason is because of this part here. So I'm going to change the scaling range down to, let's just say, 10 millimeters. It, it just gives us a, a heat map, really, of how far away our prediction is from our target. And by the way, our target is just a shape. We didn't even use the target. All we used was these five landmarks to build a model. I didn't even need to have the line shape there. So it's actually not a bad fit. So you can see even if I bring my round, it looks not too bad. I actually have the ability to run it a second time with some more fine tuning parameters and I'll do that. I think probably for this shape it won't make much difference. Those save again. Compare. Yeah, not much difference, which gives me confidence that my first run was pretty good. Again, if I bring that down to three millimeters, it's not bad. Okay, 